We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good afternoon. Uh, if you are joining physically or um, if you are joining uh, through Zoom, um, welcome. Can you all hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. Excellent. Nice to see you, uh, Mary, uh, physically attending the meeting. So this is great. Um, uh, so uh, without further ado, let's start our meeting. Uh, this is the uh, the annual uh, uh, AU Open Forum. Uh, I think you are all uh, very familiar with the uh, forum and, and its objectives. Uh, uh, we are very happy to have you all with us today. And we look forward to a very uh, positive and um, yeah, fruitful interaction with all of you. Uh, just a little bit of logistics. Uh, I think we have interpretation, uh, the uh, interpreter, interpretators are assigned and i think uh, if you can confirm that interpretation is working i think that um, uh, this is something that is uh, going to be done on zoom unfortunately people on the uh, on the floor uh, they may not be able to uh, enjoy this uh, service unless you are joining um, uh, uh, joining uh, uh, through zoom uh, i think my understanding now they are working on interpretation as we speak so um, let's give it a couple of minutes before we can uh, start, because I think we need to make sure that we have interpretation service. Thank you. Uh, Joshua and uh, Belen, please, if you confirm uh, if interpretation is uh, already set up and is ready so that we uh, can start. I did, Belen speaking here. Um, so one of the interpreters is logged in using my account. So I cannot assign anyone, only the host can assign the interpreters. So we're waiting for the host to assign us. So, but the one that the one that is assigned can can operate, right? No, we don't, I don't even think have any working actually. Okay. Uh, so, is the host? If you can make me the host, I can be able to uh, start the interpretation. Then I make you back the host. That's for the people in the hall, the technical people in the hall. If you can just make the host for me to start the interpretation, then I'll give you back the host and still remain as a host. Thank you. Great. Uh, so I'm starting the interpretation in seconds. Excellent. So do we have uh, David Beckley with us? I don't see him. Uh, so. OK. So Joshua, just let us give us a thumb up. Uh, the thumbs well, up. I've, uh, I've started uh, with the interpretation for one interpreter. So if you, if the other interpreters, you cannot just signal me, but I think we're good and we can start. Bilan is currently an interpreter. Okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Excellent, that is very, very good. Uh, so, excellent. So our, um, our panelists uh, we have today, uh, Mr. Uh, Christian, uh, 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 Christian with us. Uh, he is the acting head of division um, of the uh, Information Society Division. Uh, we're supposed to have Dawood Beckley, but he's not with us. Uh, we have also uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mokhtar Sek with the U UN Com uh, Commission, uh, UN Commission uh, for Africa, Economic Commission for Africa. And we have Mary Oduma, the African uh, IGF MAG chair. And we have Dr. Uh, uh, Margaret Nambura, uh, also Prida project, with Prida project. Uh, without uh, further ado, let me give the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Christian Menungu uh, to give uh, his uh, thoughts. I, I think Mr. Uh, uh, Menungu is going to have to highlight the progress made on DTS and other initiatives uh, by the AUC. Uh, five minutes, uh, Mr. Christian, please, uh, you have the floor.
Joshua, uh, if he if he can be assigned as a speaker, please. Sorry, who's that? Sorry, I I, I was Christian French, so. Menungo. Christian Menungo. I can see Christian. He uh, just confirmed to me he's uh, he's online. But he can mute himself uh, if he's online. So I I, I don't see him, but. Uh, Okay, until we get uh, Christian all set, um, let me move. Uh, do we have Makta? Makta sick? Apparently, Makta is not there. Uh, let me give the floor to Dr. Nambura to give a presentation on freedom. Still go ahead. Uh, Nambura, you are muted. Yes, okay. You can hear me? Yes, we can now. We can hear you. I want to share my screen. So oh, thank you again, and uh, uh, I'm going to give you a brief on uh, PRIDA, and PRIDA stands for the Policy and Regulation Initiative for Digital Africa. And uh, this project came as a result of a declaration by the African Union in 2018. Uh, the declaration encouraged participation of African stakeholders in the global IGD bit through national, regional, and continental idea of streamlining. This is based on multi-stakeholder process on IG principles. Uh, we can accessible, resilience, interoperability, internet, with localized IG debates and related policy matters. So basically, after this declaration, that's when PRIDA was founded, which is an initiative of the African Union Commission. Uh, European Union and the ITU. And uh, PRIDA has you no know, regional and continental levels, and that is IG. And uh, we are talking about both IGF and again helping to support uh, School of Internet Governance. So, again, we are supporting School of Governance, and our main focus for the last two years, as you will see from uh, the diagrams we'll have, we have focused on 23 countries of uh, from 55 member states of the African Union Commission. And again, we are supporting capacity building and uh, working on sustainability of the whole process. In 2018, once the project was started, there are studies that were done just to understand the IG landscape. How are we doing as a continent in terms of participation in international debates, uh, in IG, in ICANN, and all those bodies that are involved in the IG space. And from that uh, study, three, studies were commissioned and from the outcome of these studies, we came up with a PRIDA strategy. And this strategy uh, decided to focus on two main issues. The first one being to streamline the IG structures and processes at the national, regional and continental level. And the whole idea is to ensure we have a common voice when we go to international processes. That we have started from the national level, had our school of IGs and had our IGFs. We go to the regional level, we go to the continental level and the global level. We all know the last year and this year, this has not been possible due to COVID, but we are hoping come next year and with the IGF coming to Africa, we should be able to do that. And the next thing is to build capacity and offer coaching services to policy officers and diplomats of member states. And again, what we are saying, is that we need to have that capacity in terms of policy, in terms of technical debates, so that we are able to move together and ensure that both policymakers, technical people, they are all engaged when it comes to IG issues. Then uh, this will also ensure that internet policies and standards are adapted to the African, creating a conducive environment for digital transformation. 
I'm sure we all know that the African Union uh, launched the digital transformation strategy in uh, early last year. And basically these need to be implemented with all of us. So in this pre-implementation strategy, we structured who is doing what in this uh, uh, multi-complex uh, area of internet governance. And uh, we have African Union Commission at the apex, and uh, we are working at the national level. We work with our national conveners. And these conveners could be from different stakeholder groups, private sector, public sector, uh, the media, the internet community, name it. But then also we thought we needed to work with the PRIDA focal point. And most of the time you'll find the PRIDA focal point is from the government, is from the public sector. And the whole idea is because all the work that goes within the IG would want implementation to take place and would want everybody who is involved in the process to take part in the implementation and to ensure that whatever we are suggesting is implementable. And at the regional level, we have five regional IGFs in, uh, in the continent uh, based on the five regions we have. And in this, we are working with the regional economic communities. And again, the whole idea is for sustainability and to ensure that these are regional IGFs, they are anchored uh, within institutions and economic communities who are the most well suited. When you come at the continental level, we have the African Union Commission, which is the secretariat of the continental IGF. And again, it coordinates the school of IG at the continental level. And with that, then we are able to go to the global processes with a common voice, which is the whole idea of ensuring we have a common voice when we are going for this international process. But, uh, but again, we take cognizance of the fact that we are all operating in different um, uh, contexts. We have to customize what we are getting. So basically what we do, we get what we are getting from the global level, but again, we need to contextualize at our national levels. Starting in 2020, uh, we have been doing a lot of capacity building and uh, Last year, we focused on nine countries, and in these countries, we developed, uh, after the COVID, we realized we still needed to do capacity building, and we couldn't go in these places physically. So we came up with an online curriculum that uh, focuses, uh, is four days curriculum that can be, one can go through it uh, in 12 hours, spread in a week. And uh, it is facilitated, very contextualized, very practical, and the whole idea is to bring the concept, we bring the ideas to the people, then we try to contextualize at the national level. Uh, we supported Botswana last year, Madagascar, Eswatini, Liberia, Egypt, Mauritania, Comoros, and Cape Verde. And uh, all of those were able to establish their school of IG. And from the nine countries, we further supported five countries to organize their IGF, that is Botswana, Eswatini, Madagascar, Cape Verde, and Liberia. Uh, as a, Organizing IGF is a complex process. Uh, we need it to be multi-stakeholder, and that's the reason why we are not able to match the school of IG we support with the IGFs. Come 2021, again, we have supported eight countries, Ethiopia, Ginkati, uh, Ginkonaki, Seychelles, Djibouti, Lesotho, Central Africa Republic, and Togo. But again, we worked with countries, there's also Somalia that we supported. We have also worked with countries that have already held their school of IG in the past, but they chose or they wanted to use our platform. And uh, this uh, supported Nigeria and Togo. Again, the West Africa School of IG, they used the Moodle platform and we had quite a number of students that participated as you'll see in the coming slides. Uh, out of the 10 countries that we supported in 20, uh, 2021, five countries were able to subsequently hold their IGF. Uh, that is Somalia and um, this Sotho, but then also Togo, Nigeria, and Liberia that have been having their IGS in the past, they were still able to do that. So out of the 23 countries that as per the end of 2019 had never held any IGF, we still have seven countries that we need to focus on. And uh, that should be our focus going forward. And these countries are, I need to remove this, oops, sorry. These countries are Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, the other Guinea, uh, Tosome, Tosome, and then we have Angola, Libya, and Eritrea. So these countries, we need your support as a continent because we need to ensure that they are able to organize their school of IG and they're able to organize their IGF. So if you can support us with any of these countries, we welcome that. And in all the training that we have done, we work on the spirit of multi-stakeholderism uh, that uh, we have to, to work with the government, the private sector, the civil society, the technical community. We we have also had the members of parliament, the judiciary, so we are really expanding the number of people we are working with. So just to give you an analysis of the countries we have supported, 
uh, I, I don't want to go into the to analyze all of them, but basically that shows what we have done. And we are very, very keen when it comes to gender. And again, you see, we deliberately want to find out, uh, even when we are calling for people to apply, we insist that we do 50-50, but this is the outcome we have come up with. So uh, this tells us that we really need to work hard to ensure that this uh, divide is uh, well addressed. And again, considering the COVID issue, the fact that um, all our young children, they are staying more with the female uh, people. We need to ensure that they are enabled, they are in the digital space, they understand, they are able to guide their uh, children when it comes to cyber security or insecurity. These are the people who are spending most of the time with the children. So just to give you analysis for all the countries, this is an aggregated figure that of all the trainings we did, 72% uh, of the participants are male and 28 are female. A question to all of us, what do we need to do that uh, to ensure that come next year or probably 10, 20 years down the line, we don't end up getting these similar uh, statistics. We have to act now so that we have different statistics in 20 years to come. Again, in terms of certificates, we also realize learning online is not easy. There are so many competing activities in our calendar. And therefore, we found that completion rate was not as we would have wanted. People were very active for the four days that uh, we were engaging them. But basically, after that, the completion rate, they didn't go back to complete. And the challenge of online learning is that if you don't continue, well, the moment you take a break, it becomes a challenge to go back. So again, this is an area we are working with our participants to ensure that we increase on this completion rate. So again, for sustainability reasons, uh, we have done uh, train the trainer trainings from 2019. In 2019, we had a training that was physical. We held it in uh, Addis Ababa. In 2020, we worked with the Diplo Foundation. And again, we did an online training, 10 weeks training that was very intensive. And uh, the participants were drawn uh, from across uh, the continent. This year, we held two train the trainer training. Uh, the first one, we targeted 90, we, uh, we sent a call, 24 participants uh, applied and we enrolled them. 64 of them were very active and uh, half of them were able to complete and get a certificate. And from this number, again, uh, I must say that our content, our mood content is, uh, it has English, French and Portuguese kind of, uh, content. We are working to ensure that we are able to in, uh, interpret it to other African languages so that we have Arabic, we have Spanish and the like, so that we include every other person. And after then, train the trainer training, we did a e facilitation training. And the whole idea is to ensure sustainability because PRIDA is a staff when it comes to resources. We are very few of us, but we do want to work on a multiplier effect. We train 31 participants to be e facilitators and to ensure that whenever a country would want our support, we have a pool of people that we can send and work with that. And therefore that one participant uh, were able to complete. And for these two training, you can see the regional representation that uh, West Africa had the majority. We have East Africa, we have Central Africa, we have South Africa and we have North Africa. That is for the TOT training. The e-facilitation is still almost the same uh, statistics that uh, you'll find that um, West Africa is actually very active, a challenge to uh, the other regions that we need also to actively participate. Again, we are saying we realize there are other training initiatives, there are other capacity building initiatives that are going on. For instance, we, uh, we know North Africa have held two school of IGs this year. They did one in February where we worked with them and they already did another one in November. So basically there is a lot of capacity building going uh, on. I want to go into that. Uh, I want to go through this because this is basically what I have been talking about that uh, basically under internet governance, we are doing capacity building. We are streamlining the IG processes from the national, regional, continental to have a common voice. The fact that uh, we have developed a strategy and we have been working to ensure that uh, we, we bring all, all of us together and have a common position. Uh, so basically, I may not go into details in this because, again, it will be discussed in my last slide. And uh, going forward, what are we planning to do in 2022? Uh, one of the things we have already started is to ensure sustainability of the curriculum we have and sustainability of the trainings. And so we are working with the pan Africa University through the School of Governance, Humanities and Social Sciences that is uh, 
uh, headquarters in uh, Cameroon to come up with a curriculum that would be uh, em embedded in their uh, teaching curriculum that it can be taken by anyone as either a course or a module within the building. Uh, it should be available anytime from mid next year or earlier than that. And this curriculum have 10 modules uh, modeled uh, with what uh, internet governance is all about. Uh, and um, we should be able to have this on and to get your input as well. And again, what else are we doing? We are developing a child online policy and strategy. We have already started doing the policy. We did, uh, we had stakeholder consultation where we talked to key experts in the continent that are doing some work related to child online policy. And with that, we have a draft already that will be discussed on the 20th uh, through a task force. And after that, that will inform the strategy we'll come up with. Again, we call all of you to work together. We all realize that come uh, in the coming future, child online issues will be quite key for us. Uh, with the COVID-19, we all got exposed to the internet. Uh, you may, may, whether you are in the urban area, whether you are in the rural areas, we all had to get to, uh, to use the internet, whether you have the skills or not, whether you know the risks or not. And basically, this is a point that we come up with this uh, policy. We try to sensitize everyone that internet is a good tool, but again, uh, based on how you are introduced to it, it, it can have different outcomes. So again, come next year, we'll be supporting national, regional, and continental school of IGs and IGFs, and we'll uh, give priority to the seven countries I highlighted. Those are the seven countries of the 23 countries in Africa that had not held any IGF or school of IGS at the end of 2019. We'll also be working with national, regional, and continental school of IGs and IGF, the existing one, to see where we can collaborate. As I have said, we already have a pool of that one experts that uh, are conversant with IG issues. They, uh, they, they are from different, uh, they can speak different languages, English school. Uh, and we, we noted that my already benefited from that pool when they were having the school of IG. Again, come next, uh, next year, we'll be focusing on um, parliamentarians will develop content for them, we'll try to sensitize them in the cognition of the fact that uh, they need to be uh, at the table and they need to have the right skill, the right capacity to be able to engage and help us to come up with the best uh, uh, laws to guide us. And again, we'll be very active uh, in supporting uh, the Global IGF 2022 in Ethiopia, and uh, we will collaborate with all the people that are working on that. So thank you very much. And uh, you are welcome to see what uh, our website has, a lot of uh, interactive uh, content and look forward to more interactions with you. Thank you and back to you, Adil. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, Dr. Nambura for the excellent presentation. And I think uh, Dr. Nambura raised uh, some interesting um, uh, uh, you know, issues and also highlighted some of the achievement and I think Maybe collectively, we need to look at these issues like the gender uh, issues. And I think this is something that we are also looking into it through the, uh, uh, we are ha we, we've hired the consultant to advise us on uh, what our kind of action we need to take to make sure that the, um, uh, this issue is addressed. But also, if you have some thoughts and ideas, please uh, feel free to share. Even though you dictate to the country that you need 50 50, but then at the end of the day, uh, not so many female will show up. Uh, so this is something that we are struggling with, but we are we are hopeful that with your support, uh, we could uh, uh, make some headways uh, in this uh, in this uh, area. Uh, so uh, hold your questions to the end of the session, uh, to the end of the uh, uh, speaker, uh, uh, until we open the floor for Q&A. Uh, next, uh, we'll give the floor to Mr. Uh, uh, Christian Menungu, the acting head of division, uh, to give us also some, uh, to highlight uh, some of the key achievements and the, uh, some of the milestones uh, uh, through data that were done through AUC. Uh, Mr. Christian, do you have the floor? Please. Thank you, Adil, for giving me the floor. Good afternoon uh, to everyone. Good morning, if uh, you are still uh, in morning time. Uh, I want just to 
give an overview on uh, the digital transformation strategy adopted by uh, the EU leadership in February 2020 to see uh, to let uh, participants uh, see how far we have gone uh, since the adoption of the strategy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, Africa is uh, the continent with the most youthful population structure. Digital transformation as a driving force for inno innovative, inclusive, and uh, sustainable growth is of paramount importance. From uh, innovations such as mobile uh, money, platform to large-scale business process outsourcing development. Digital is creating jobs, addressing poverty, re reducing inequality, and facilitating the delivery of goods and services. In line with the above, the AU summit held in February 2020, adopted the digital transformation strategy for 2020-30 period. The digital transformation strategy builds on the existing initiatives like the PREDA projects, which is supporting uh, the implementation of the DTS, the PIDA, PIDA being the program for infrastructure development in Africa and other initiatives, including the single African air transport market, SATEM, or the free movement of people and uh, <clears throat> the AFCTA as well. The objective of the DTS is to earn us digital technology and innovation to transform South African society and economies to promote Africa's integration, generate inclusive economic growth, stimulate job creation, break the digital dividend and eradicate poverty for the continent socioeconomic development as well as ensuring Africa's ownership of modern tools of digital management. The DTS is based on uh, foundation pillars like uh, enabling environments, policy and regulation, digital infrastructure, digital skills and human capacity, digital innovation and entrepreneurship. We, the, the strategy builds also on critical sectors, including digital industry, digital trade and financial link, uh, services, digital government, digital education, digital health, and digital agriculture to drive the digital transformation and cross-cutting theme like uh, digital content and and applications, digital ID, emerging technologies, cybersecurity, privacy, and personal data protection, and research and development to support the digital ecosystem. It will also include policy recommendations, it also includes policy recommendations and actions under each of the pillars, critical sectors and cross-cutting theme. As we are speaking, the status of the implementation of the strategy is as follows. On pillar foundation pillars, the PRITA project, EU funded, funded by the EU and aim at achieving three main objectives, namely efficient and harmonized spectrum utilization across the continent, harmonization of measurable ICT telecommunication policy, legal, and a regulatory framework, 
and African stakeholders' participa active participation in the global internet governance debate will contribute to the African digital transformation strategy by creating a supportive and enabling environment to build on a continental digital ecosystem, especially with regard to harmonization of policy and regulation and Africa's contribution to internet governance global debate. Two topics have been addressed in 2020, notably data protection and localization and uh, market entry conditions, licensing and authorization regimes through the development of a monitoring and evaluation ME prototype with associated harmonization indicator, which was tested in 10 selected countries. Capacity building is deployed to capacitate African stakeholders to participate in the global internet governance debate, strengthening the African voice in international fora and uh, contribute to reflect Africa priorities in global internet policies and rules. I think Dr. Nyambura uh, highlights some of the achievement on this regard. On critical sectors, we can note that with the support of PREDA, digital sectorial strategy have been developed for agriculture, education, and health. Work is still underway, hopefully by the end of the second semester of 2022, we'll be able to complete all the... I think we lost Christian. Um... Hello, Christian, can you hear us? He's, he's out of so the call. Until we have him back, uh, yes, go ahead, Joshua, please. No, he's out of the call. That's what I'm saying. He's no longer. He, he just call. disconnected. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. So let's let's um, until he joins back to continue his presentation. Let let me invite uh, Mr. Man, uh, Ms. the chair of the African uh, IGF Mag, Mary Aduma, and Mary, please, if you can also tell us who is there in the room, uh, in terms of uh, uh, panelists. And, uh, and, and just give us a description. And, and I want you also to give you a, a task. Uh, when we get to the Q&A, maybe you can collect three uh, questions to be asked uh, uh, during uh, the Q&A session, three or four questions, depending on the time uh, that we have. Mary, please go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. OK. So those on online can hear me as well. Uh, I, ha I have. Uh, a number of people in the room, I can count, but prominently I have Nenna Nwakama pr present. There are 40 people here. Okay, so, and we have an honorable member of Tanzanian uh, National, I mean, Parliament. Um, if you don't mind, say your name for us. Oh, my name is Nema Lugangira, member of Parliament from Tanzania. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can uh, can can uh, Mary? Can we give her like a few minutes to say something? Okay, uh, go ahead. So today, today, yeah, okay, go ahead. Please. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. As introduced, my name is Nema Lugangira. I'm a member of Parliament from Tanzania. Um, I would like to commend all the efforts by Prida um, in in the activities that you're doing. But I had a few areas that I wanted to highlight. First of all, I note that um, from 2021 to 2023, you have established a child online safety and strategy. And I would also like for Prida to consider developing women in politics online safety and strategy, because as a female parliamentarian myself, um, we endure a lot of online gender-based violence, which is subjected to us only because we are female. Um, oftentimes when I personally post and uh, perhaps an issue that I've contributed in parliament, the way that it's being received becomes sexualized just because I'm a female, but the same content can be shared by my, by my colleague who's a male parliamentarian, and the focus will be on the agenda of what was presented. 
Um, and we've seen that that leads to a lot of women parliamentarians deciding not to be online. Therefore, I would highly recommend that PRIDA also develops an online safety and strategy for women in politics, particularly parliamentarians, um, so that more of us can be online, um, et cetera. The other item that I wanted to touch on is the importance of parliamentarians being part of these discussions, because oftentimes, um, as also you, you, one of the presenters already mentioned, parliamentarians were not at the decision-making tables or discussions, but once strategies are being passed, we're then expected to expedite the same um, within our respective parliaments. And it's very difficult to do so when you're not well-informed. And I've already noted that um, as parliamentarians, we have limited understanding on areas of internet governance. Therefore, perhaps through PRIDA, there can be a strategic effort to making sure that parliamentarians are capacitated to understand the issues of internet governance. And we, and we play a central role in making sure we have a healthy, um, a healthy ecosystem. Um, and to conclude, it's very important that you're developing an agricultural strategy. And in that strategy, I would like to um, highlight that it's important to remember rural women, especially rural women, smallholder farmers, and in all our interventions as Africa, we shouldn't just focus in the main cities and urban cities, but we should also make sure that we bridge the rural digital gaps. Because at the end of the day, you know, if, if some of us will remain not being online, then the, the advantages and efforts and possibilities that the in internet brings will, will, not, will not be fully realized. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Asante. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, very... Uh, uh, Instructive uh, intervention. Uh, Mary, uh, my apologies, I give you back the floor. No, not at all. Um, um, we're happy to have her around and um, she's, made, she's made a very, va so, so many valid points. And I would like Nenna to greet us, please. What? Nenna. <laughs> Nenna Makama. Um, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, it is really interesting to find that we have a full room and we want to congratulate uh, the IGF and uh, Poland, the organizers, uh, for having us. Uh, to Nima, we've exchanged uh, contacts. As you know, um, during Generation Equality, the Web Foundation worked with some of us who are here to get TikTok, Facebook, Google, and, um, and Twitter to agree uh, to work with us on reducing online gender-based violence. And for those of us who are here, we are still arranging the world. It is still the 16 days of activism. Um, it is true that the pandemic has brought to fore some of the good news we've been preaching about connectivity and by the way the executive director of the alliance for affordable internet my colleague sonia george is way there she's sitting here and for some of you who don't know sonia is african uh, she grew up in south africa by the way in southern africa now my point i want to make two points uh, beyond online gender-based violence and the need for more women to feel secure online I want to talk about the after pandemic Africa. Um, for those of us who've been coming here, you know we've been working on remote participation. This is the 16th IGF. And finally, the world has come to understand that we can do things remotely, that we can do things online, and we can do many things remotely, not just meetings, but at home. And so the question I want to leave with every single one of us here is, are you going to be the same after COVID? What are you going to do to your health system? What are you going to do to your education system? What are you going to do to your government administration and bureaucracy after the pandemic? When are we going to realize that affordable, meaningful connectivity should be a right for every African. Mary, in closing, I want to say, um, it is true that people want to 
account for digital dividends in dollars and in euro. But those people already had some digital connectivity. They had TV, they had good transport, they had good communication. But in Africa, I think that digital dividends go beyond how much is invested and how much money is made. We should also look at how digital connectivity is increasing who we are as a people, increasing our community effectiveness, increasing our capacity to deal to do the normal things that people used to do. This is really very important when we calculate how we are gaining from the, from the digital dividends. And that explains why, once again, we cannot stand any day of internet shutdown. This is the place to say it. And this is place to call out that Africans have a right to dignity, digital dignity. The Africans have a right to be online, secure, safe, men and women. Once again, it is 16 days of women activism. Please let's connect everyone, male, female, and marginalized populations. My name is Nenna. I come from the internet and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Nenna. Thank you, thank, thank thank you very you. much, my good friend, Nenna. Let me just uh, extend also our welcome to the executive the director of the World Foundation. Welcome. And back to you, uh, Mary. Uh, I think we are kind of pressed of time on yes, time. Yes, uh, yes. We, we, are going to, we are going to move quickly. Uh, I'm happy to let you know that I did that uh, Aisha is here. Asha uh, is a, a moderator, I mean, a, a, a rapporteur, and uh, she will be able to take the questions. Okay, Asha, I hope that's fine. We have a, 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 an African friend, um, and uh, she's been doing a lot with us in, in terms of school on internet governance, and that is Avery. Avery will speak to us a little about the school on internet governance. Avery, you have the floor, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary. Um, microphone is on and I can be heard, yes. Okay, yeah, I have been privileged to be involved with the African School on Internet Governance since it was founded in uh, 2013. Uh, what I basically do there is I coordinate a practicum, which is to give the fellows at the school the experience of participating in a group like this but in a experimental type of, of environment. So for the last two years, the African uh, School on Internet Governance, the AFRASIG, has met remotely. Last year, we did something a little different and had basically an alumni uh, session where a lot of the alumni from the previous sessions came together, discussed what they had learned, discussed what, you know, wish they had learned, et cetera, and basically how they could use it. This year, we had a full, um, remote school. We had about 40 fellows, happy to say evenly split between men and women. So, and that's been one of our focus from 20 countries. Uh, the African uh, School and Internet Governance is sponsored by, by you all, by the African Union Commission, by uh, uh, APC, and by uh, the research ITC Africa. So, you know, a lot of things I could say about the school. It's very vibrant. Even as a remote school, it was very vibrant. So thank you, Mary. I don't know if that's what you wanted me to cover, but yeah, sure, sure. what I have. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I also want to say thank you for being a friend and a friend indeed, even when it is no more physical. Virtually, you are there for us. Thank you. And uh, just a uh, few few more things to say about Africa Internet Governance Forum. Let, let me remove my, my the Africa Internet Governance Forum. The tenth meeting of the AFIGF will, will be virtually um, holding on the fourteen to sixteen December. We have had twenty since 20, uh, 2017, We had our charter. Twenty eighteen we had and in Egypt. In 2018, physically in Sudan, 2019, physically in Chad, 
And 2020 was the first time we did it remotely. Uh, everybody can understand why it was a remote, uh, I mean, a virtual meeting. And we are planning to have another virtual meeting 14th to the uh, 16th of December. Uh, please, we are independent, so we can always hold our, our um, IGF anytime, even after the global IGF. But the most important thing that we know what we are looking at. And uh, our theme for this year is, the thematic, I mean, the advancing digital transformation in Africa in the face of crisis. We know that there was the pandemic crisis. We also have beyond pandemic crisis, we have a security crisis in, in Africa. So we'll be looking at that. And there are so many, and the, and the, and the focus will be the DTS as, the, as Christian was telling us. Um, that being said, I, I want to invite all of you to be part of it and, um, I know that um, yeah, it's happening towards the end of the year, but please spare us the time. 14th to the, to the 16th of December, we'll have the Africa Internet Governance Forum holding online. We have um, support from um, some of our partners and they are ready to join with us. This year, we are going to have um, uh, some parallel sessions, uh, workshops, and, um, and do the opening ceremony and do the plenary sessions. I don't want to hold us too much because people may like to ask questions or make comments. So uh, back to you, um, um, Adil, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mary, for this uh, brief and uh, informative statement. Uh, Christian, I will give you a couple of minutes uh, to conclude your presentation because we will have 10 minutes for Q&A. Unfortunately, we've repeatedly, I hope that the, uh, the IGF Secretariat is us. We have uh, repeatedly requested that this forum be held for 90 minutes because I think one hour is just too short of a time to go through uh, uh, the presentation as well as to receive question on the presentation. So I, I would, uh, uh, request again uh, that we will be, be given uh, 90 minutes in the future. Christian, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. I hope uh, you understood I lost the connection due to power shortage. I'm sorry for that. I was updating participant on uh, the status of implementation of the DTS since his adoption in 2020. Uh, in this regard, I was uh, informing uh, the floor that um, three digital sectorial strategies are being developed for uh, agriculture, e education, and health. Regarding cross-cutting team, uh, we have some achievements, mostly on uh, the review of AU Malabo Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection. This is uh, to develop uh, and also to develop policy paper on uh, child online safety and employment. And the third one, is to develop a continental cyber security strategy. A work is uh, going on. We hope by the end of this month, the three documents will be ready for consideration uh, by uh, task force members and then by uh, <clears throat> member states. Uh, we also uh, try to organize best practice, provide a strategic orientation and key recommendation on, uh, on, on online child safety and cyber security strategies. Uh, on e-commerce, an AU e-commerce strategy has been developed. Regarding uh, um, uh, data, a continental data policy framework was developed to set a common vision, vision, principle, principles, strategic priority, and key recommendation to guide EU member states in developing the data system and capability to effectively derive value from data that is being generated by citizen, government entities, and uh, industries. We also develop uh, the AU interoperability framework for digital ID. Uh, 
This framework sets out a vision that will enable people in Africa to have the possibility of easily and securely accessing the public and private sectors they need when they need them independently of the location. To this end, the framework defines common requirements, minimum standards, government mechanisms, and further alignment among legal frameworks with the objective to that enable person to authenticate and verify their legal identity offline and online to access public and private sector services in EU member state to empower people, empower people with control over the personal data, including the ability to selectively disclose only those attributes that are required for a particular transaction. Third, to strengthen trust and operability among foundational identification system of EU member state. This is in uh, a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, what is with what has been done so far with regard to the implementation of uh, uh, the DTS. Uh, we are happy that uh, the 2021 IGF give us opportunity to brief you. And uh, I would like also to say this opportunity to call for more uh, uh, cooperation, to strengthen our collaboration on digital uh, collaboration, to enable our continent to take full advantage of the fourth revolution. With that, I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. Uh, I think we are very pressed on time. Uh, let's take a few questions. If uh, those who are joining online, they can you can post your question on the chat. Uh, those are attending physically, please uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I think uh, my understanding, Aisha is going to uh, facilitate that. Maybe we can, we can get a couple of questions uh, just uh, together uh, so that we answer them collectively uh, after the questions. Anybody has a question here? You can, okay, go to the mic and ask your question. Then uh, Adil, you coordinate the questions online. This physical one, yes, exactly. please tell us your name, your country, and uh, then you say your question. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Lamin Fofana from Sierra Leone Civil Society. And uh, I wanted to ask the questions we have seen, which have been highlighted from uh, the different countries that have hosted the African IGF. And uh, what the Sorry. And uh, what I wanted to know is, what are some of the preparations that have been made towards other countries which have not had the opportunity or which has not even think of it to be part of the African IGF? And what have uh, the African Union is doing towards that to see at least we have a broad base country that to be everyone to be on board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Adil, I think you got the question. Any other yes, question? Sir. Get to the microphone, tell us your name and then you ask your question. Thank you. My name is Mwana Hamisi Singano. I work with African Women Development and Communication Network Femnet. Uh, my question is related to uh, engagement of women and gender. Uh, you did highlight in a presentation that only 20 plus percent of women engaged, but I'm yet to hear concrete strategies on how, what are we planning to do uh, to maintain uh, equality? Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other question? And the, the last. Okay, uh, we have uh, Emmanuel from Togo as a question. Please, Emmanuel, introduce yourself and ask your question. Yeah, my name is Emmanuel Vitus from Togo. So I have uh, one question for the African Union is uh, regarding the next year global IGF. I know the world is coming to us next year. So my question is to know what is our strategy? Uh, what are we doing to get ready for that meeting? Because uh, we usually say, you know, in Africa, if you are not 
on the table, you are probably the menu. So we want to know the world that is coming to us next year, are we going to be the menu or we are ready to really make it happen? So I want to know the strategy and how we can contribute as stakeholders. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Manuel. Thank you. Let me just summarize the question. Uh, uh, excuse, me. Have... excuse me, excuse yeah. me, Adil. Yeah. Yes. Adil, please, Honorable has a, a fi final question, please. Um, thank you. I wanted to ask on what is the strategy of making sure that um, we, we, we strengthen the connectivity in our rural schools? You know, how do we make sure that digital, we, we, we provide digital skills, digital literacy from a young age in our rural schools? Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you, Adil, please. Thank you very, very much. Please, we have, we have two more questions online. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe you can just state the question, but maybe we'll not be able to answer the question because of the time. We have only three minutes left. Yeah, I shall Let ask me... the questions, please. Read them out. Okay, so the first question is from uh, Lidian from Cameroon. What are the criteria of being supported by PRIDA to strengthen a national IGF and SIGS? What is the role of PRIDA in Central Africa? The second question is from um, Lourdes, journalist from Kenya. What is uh, EU and PRIDA doing to avert online uh, violence? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha. So let me just state the questions, and I may we may not have time, uh, but I think most of the question goes to they go to uh, Dr. Nambura. Um, uh, basically, uh, the question on online violence: What is uh, the PRIDA criteria for selecting the countries, and what is the opportunity for? countries that never had the IGF, uh, what are Frida doing, doing for Central Africa, and the preparation for global IGF, and the connectivity question from uh, Her Excellency the Parliamentary. Thank you, Adil. Uh, probably I start with the question on uh, criteria for selecting the countries. And uh, basically we did a study in 2019, just to understand which are the countries that are lagging behind in terms of school of IGF. And our study showed that out of the 55 uh, African lost Union member countries, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, so our study showed that out of the 55 African Union member countries, 23 of them had not held a school of IG or IGF. They didn't have the structures uh, in place. And therefore our focus has been on those countries. So far, we are remaining with seven to work with them. Uh, and basically now come next year, we plan to work with all the countries. Basically, we have a pool of experts that will be helping us to, to support the School of IGs at the national level. So going forward, while our focus is on seven countries, we will still be supporting the other countries. Then the other question was uh, in relation to what we are doing to ensure we have more women on board. And I think that this is a question for all of us as a criteria when we are recruiting participants to, to attend the schools and we work with the countries. We work with the national uh, focal point, we work with the national convener, and we ask them to ensure gender 50-50. And uh, even when we get the list, as much as we try to balance from our end by ensuring that all the ladies that have applied for it, they automatically become participants, we still are not able to balance, which clearly shows that the challenge is deeper than that. We probably need to go back to early childhood development. Are we including the women from that level? How, uh, how are we ensuring that we don't uh, have uh, this uh, diversity or this uh, in, uh, exclusion? And we start now wanting to take action when we are at, at a different level, at the tertiary, at a working level. I think we have to go deeper than that. And that's why, again, we need to work with the uh, teachers, primary school teachers, early childhood teachers, uh, secondary school teachers, let us address that gap from that level. Otherwise, 20 years, 30 years down the line, we are likely to be talking about the same thing. Uh, to the member of parliament from uh, Tanzania, yeah, it is very, very important to ensure that we focus on women as well that are in politics and not just in politics. With, with that kind of statistics, then we are saying that the women who are online, only 28%, uh, they are not able, they, they, we don't have confidence when we get to the internet. We don't understand the pros and cons on being online. And therefore, we need to come up with a strategy for all the women, but more so for the women, uh, for the women in parliament who are uh, leading us in terms of policies and the like. 
So again, I call all of you, let's work out together and see how best we can address this, uh, uh, this uh, challenge. Uh, the lady from uh, Femnet, again, I know you advocate uh, women issues. We want to ensure that women are brought uh, at the table. Let us work together and come up with strategy for that. And I think that is about it from my end. Uh, probably from Central Africa, we worked with the, the MAG uh, organizing the Central Africa IGF and the SIG last year. We supported in terms of uh, technical, technical capacity where our technical experts were able to facilitate or to provide content uh, last year. This year, uh, I'm not sure how far we have gone uh, because uh, I don't think you have held, you have held your regional uh, school of IG or IGF, but basically we are available to provide you with experts and ourselves are ready to work with you to see how best we can ensure that we are not being left behind. Thank you and back. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nambora. I put you in a difficult spot, but I think you managed to navigate through the questions. I think there was in the chat line, there is an email address if you want to have uh, further questions, info at afigf.africa. You send the question there on, if your question is not answered appropriately, please also resend the question so that it can be answered. Lastly, before we conclude this uh, session, I want to address the question from Emmanuel regarding uh, the global IGF. UNICA is leading this effort, uh, United uh, uh, Nations Economic Commission for Africa with the support of the African Union Commission and also the government of uh, Ethiopia. And uh, the plan is to formulate a task force, uh, you know, uh, so that uh, we can uh, together work on this one. And I think more to come in this front. Uh, I think with that, we come to the conclusion of this session. We thank you very much. I know that every year we say the same message. We are short on time. Unfortunately, we could not field all the, most of the question. And we apologize for that. But I think it was great uh, seeing you again, even though it was virtual and uh, great interacting with you as usual. And uh, we look forward to our next uh, open forum. Hopefully it will be physical so that we can meet, we can chat and, and, and discuss uh, these African issues for the, uh, for the benefit of Africa. We all work for Africa and we want to see Africa uh, in, the, in, in, in a positive light. Uh, with that, I thank you and uh, we conclude this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adil. Thank you, our friends that came to be with us. Thank you, Africans. And uh, let's make it on 14th to the 16th of uh, uh, December for the Africa Internet Governance Forum. And uh, um, uh, Magta will be briefing us on uh, the hosting of uh, 2022 IGF in Africa. Thank you. <laughs>